Hello, you're watching a replay of the Facebook Live. And today I'm going to talk about the most common mistakes that New Zealand investors make and how you can avoid them. I appreciate you being here. All information that you will learn today is of general nature. So make sure you um, get an independent financial advice. Welcome to the show for New Zealand property owners and investors, hosted by Maxim. My name is Maxim, and please feel free to type in the comments below any questions you want me to answer, and I will be glad to do that now during the live talk or later at the end. First of all, if you could please type your name and where you're from, do you invest locally or overseas so i can hear that uh, you are joining me right now and you can listen me properly while you're doing that i will uh, start talking that i'll start with a nice photo that i've recently seen uh, on instagram and it shows what world we're living in at the moment this was taken by a local photographer and you can see all the planes grounded that's in New Zealand, Auckland Airport, and it's empty. The whole airport is empty. Uh, can you imagine if you would, uh, if someone would ask you, say, last year or six months ago, that the whole airport would be empty, no tourists flying in and out, and it's just uh, mind-boggling uh, how the world changed. Hi Ken, hi Alejandra, and yeah, so it's motorway empty completely. This was the um, Auckland Harbour Bridge, uh, I would say maybe two months ago in January, now it's empty. This was one of the busiest motorways in Auckland. Thousands of cars pass it every hour. Now it's only just a dozen. So we are, we live in a very unique time and although it, it sounds like that I'm happy, but it's not because um, a lot of people lose their jobs and a lot of them still will. Uh, unfortunately, we'll experience a lot of stressful time. I'm personally experiencing as well a lot of uncertainty, how it's going to play out. Hopefully, we'll come out of it even stronger uh, sooner rather than later. And yeah, so we just have to learn the best of it and uh, apply for the better for our family or, or business. The reason I'm showing you this photo is because... Hi, Jesse. Hi, Grace. Um, the reason I'm showing you this because you probably have heard it way too many times that... We've never seen it before. It's going to be even uh, worse than global recession. And some people, some economists say that it's going to be even worse than Great Depression 70 years ago or 80 years ago. This is why I decided to be very conservative with one of my first investments. And probably you have it the same. It's called Kiwi Seven. The reason I will start talking about the Kiwi Seven because it's still, it's not a saving. I, th I don't think it's got a proper name. It should be called Kiwi Invest. And since 2nd of March, I've changed from active growth fund to a conservative fund because that was the most conservative fund available. And then on the 1st of April, I believe they've created a cash fund. I would have switched to a cash fund uh, on the 2nd of March because only then I realized that it's not going to be a short term uh, recession and we're going to be experiencing at least two years, I believe, of uh, losses on New Zealand Stock Exchange and our economy is going to be uh, going into recession pretty much right now. Um, thank you for your questions. I will um, pick some of them during our live talk. So at the moment, I'm just going to talk about the Kiwi 7. So I'll switch to cash fund 1st of April. And I think I've made the right choice because as you can see, the one month return from February to the end of March is double digits for the growth fund and only 5% for the conservatives. So I've already saved 5%. And if you've got, I don't know, $40,000 or some people have $100,000 in KiwiSaver, you would have saved yourself, if you had $100,000, uh, you would have saved yourself at least $5,000. But we're not finished yet. I believe it's going to last for at least 12 to 24 months of big losses. So you may want to consider doing that as well. Talk to an independent financial advisor if it's the right move for you. I would do that if I would consider 
buying some kind of property or I would have another big expense coming up where I would need to use these funds. Uh, you can mainly use these funds, obviously, for the first time purchase of the property. So if you can ask me any questions about the Kiwi Center, I can possibly comment on something. Hi, Mandeep. Hi, Joes. Hi, David. Hello, Petra. Hi, Makesh. So yeah, I'm gonna stay in this cash fund for at least 12 months till we get the vaccine because this is what they say. It's gonna take at least 12 to 18 months to get the vaccine. And this is when it's gonna be more clear for me that we are on the recovery trend. Even though we can see some stock exchanges do go up, but I think it's just temporary and it's gonna be going down soon. Because the reason it's gonna, do gonna go down, we haven't seen unemployment reports in New Zealand and they say economy a lot of economists say the the states United States of America will face at least 15 percent of unemployment in the next 12 to 24 months this is very bad it's gonna be damaging for all other countries that rely on the trade with the United States and New Zealand is one of them so we're gonna suffer quite a lot and I want to prepare myself for it that's why I switched to Kiwi Saver cash fund all right I had uh, one of the questions that I had was what I think about dividends that are going to be paid by the banks well they were planning to pay it last month but they are no longer allowed to do that because the Reserve Bank of New Zealand said well guys you're gonna sacrifice the dividends because i think they're gonna benefit a lot can you imagine how much money flooded the system uh, the reserve bank of new zealand is gonna print enormous amount of cash they have already committed at least 30 billions i believe dozens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of household will top up their loans or defer their loan repayments it means that the bank will still make money on interest this is huge so the banks will be very profitable for the next near future that's why the bank the reserve bank of new zealand has done a very smart move and told them hey you're not gonna send this cash back to your Australian parents or to shareholders. We have to write it out and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand wants to keep the cash in the system if it gets worse. Yeah, I agree with you, Glenn, that banks will suffer. Well, I don't know where, how I didn't read your, I didn't read your comment proper, properly. Uh, I don't think they will suffer. Um, if you can actually explain how will they suffer, I'd be very curious to know. Because, well, the only way they could suffer if there would be a lot of defaults. The, obviously, the government is going to cover at least 20% of the losses. So I don't think banks will be lending money to unprofitable businesses or the businesses that are just about to collapse. And one of the rules for the banking uh, system was they're going to lend money, they're going to defer the home loans only if you've been paying your monthly obligations in the past and you hadn't any financial problems recently. So that's why I think uh, banks will be picky. They, they're going to still use their checks to make sure they give out money to businesses that have chances to survive over the next six to 12 months. I have a question from a couple of people. Just give me a second to read it. My opinion on the future, if the market and which industry would hold best in this time. Obviously, healthcare, food products, companies that produce healthcare, food exporters should benefit. Well, we can see Fischl and Paykel. They've been growing over the last three months by 25%. Basically, all in, uh, healthcare-related re companies uh, will be doing okay. The utility companies as well should be all right because we all consume power, we all use internet. So Coros and all other energy companies will be still making money, although they're not going to be as profitable because uh, I, I think uh, some of the businesses will be consuming less power, but I think they will make money from the households. Thank you for all the questions uh, that you are typing. If you want to follow uh, my daily profit reports and other updates I do, please subscribe, follow this page, and you're going to be the first one to learn any other market tips all right i have a question from 
Kodrian, the future of the retail stores such as Kathmandu. Obviously, it's um, not bright. We have a lockdown for the next four weeks and um, a lot of doctors say to be safe, they should extend it for another couple of weeks. So it's at least one month of losses for hundreds of retailers. A lot of these international retailers like Kathmandu, they, they rely on tourists. And New Zealand is not going to see any tourists for the next foreseeable future. It's been already mentioned by the Prime Minister of New Zealand that unfortunately the borders uh, will be closed till we get the vaccine. So it's another 12 to 18 months till we see any tourists on our shores. So I don't think Kathmandu uh, will pay dividends uh, for the next 12 to, eight, uh, to, eight, to 18 months. Another question, do I prefer to buy ETFs in chunks or dollar cost average? What's your preference? Thank you, Matthew, for the question. Uh, yes, dollar cost average strategy is one of the best. Unless you are working in the industry and you are kind of an insider and you know what's happening. If you can see and you've got enough data to show that, say, if you've got, uh, if you invest $1,000 in one company in a particular industry and you believe it's going to grow in the, in the near future, then I would pick this particular stock. Otherwise, if you're just a casual investor like me, it's better to diversify and invest in managed funds or ETFs like KiwiSaver or other managed funds. I haven't actually invested in ETF myself because I just don't find it very entertaining. I prefer to research companies and pick stocks. I do it uh, together with a friend of mine. We've been doing it since 2015 and I enjoy it a lot. It's not just uh, to make money, but it's it gives me a lot of um, fun and I learn a lot. It's a social activity for me and our friends. So this is what I do. Thoughts on the retirement sector. Thank you, Paul. My opinion on the retirement sector is that it mainly property stock. So it's gonna be fine over the next 10 to 20 years because we're gonna all age. We will need some care and the retirement uh, village, uh, retirement villages uh, is one of the best ways to look after aging population. Uh, we have a shortage of retirement villages and I wouldn't, uh, I've got some retirement villages stocks in my portfolio. So I think it's a good investment long term. At the moment, if we see some cases of coronavirus in the retirement village, it's gonna damage the stocks quite a lot. I would stay away of investing in any of them for the next 12 months. Again, I'm very conservative. Just ride it out and wait and see how it's gonna play out. And I'm sure you have, will have plenty of time to get some bargains. Because if we see at least one infection in a retirement village, I think the stocks will plummet by at least 10 to 15% because this is the most, this age group is the most susceptible to death. And unfortunately, um, yeah, it's not going to be good for them. I haven't, uh, all these retirement villages, uh, they are a good bargain if they can sustain the same prices for the next year. Because as I said, I don't think it's a good, although I'm, I'm uh, saying uh, all my investment tips that I use personally, once again, it's a, just a general information you should seek independent financial advice i say uh, what i do at the moment and i wouldn't invest in anything although the best industry practice is invest right now when you can see shares uh, on discount by at least 30 or 40 percent right but the reason i'm not investing is that guys we're gonna see a great depression it's not just me who is saying that, but a lot of economists. They revise their projections uh, pretty much on a daily basis. You could hear a couple of weeks ago, they were saying we could hit the unemployment rate by 7%. Now they're saying it's 10%. And it's not looking good. That's why I'm not investing, even though it looks cheap. I think who is to say, like, once again, remember, would you believe me if I would tell you three months ago that New Zealand will be closed completely for everyone? Of course not. Would you believe that Qantas Airline would land all their planes? There would be no flights. 
Of course not. You would say I'm crazy. Therefore, I think we're just starting to see the ramifications of what is going to happen. And I think the stocks will go out by another 20% at most. As soon as we start to see profit reports for the first quarter, and we're going to see the sea of red because at least I would say over 50% of the companies on the New Zealand Stock Exchange would report negative earnings. I'm just going to take a minute and read some of the questions. My opinion on investing in the airline stocks. I would definitely stay away because I'm going to repeat myself, but it's just such an uncertain time. I don't think there is any good tourism related company that I would invest in myself because I, I think it's just they are not taking into account that we're not going to see tourists for the next 12 to 18 months because this is what the prime minister of new zealand said that there is a chance the new zealand borders will be closed for the next 12 to 18 months and the reason i believe it's going to happen because can you imagine any politician wanting to be responsible for the death of hundreds of new zealand citizens i don't think so they're, they're going to be very conservative they're going to be very cautious of letting other people in we saw it in China when they opened the borders, they started to have coronavirus incidents again. So it wasn't local, it was the incoming passengers. If you like this information, I appreciate if you hit the like button, follow my page and subscribe to future updates so you can be the first one to learn any other useful information. Thank you for the questions, Matthew. Some of the companies have year-long waiting list, so irrespective of death, no offense, they should weather the storm. I think whatever we knew so far and all the strategies that were working last month, I think you can throw out of the window because even um, recently, three weeks ago, the retirement village MetLife Care was trading at $7.00 a share, nearly $7 a share, while all the other retirement stock villages were selling at a discount of 40%, 50%. And everyone so everyone was so sure that the stock will hold up its value because there, were, there was a, a takeover of this company. But I think in the last week, the rumor and the talk started to happen that there was one tiny clause in the contract that the buyer was able to pull out of the out of the contract when there was a material change in the company therefore Matthew, if you're saying that there are some kind of waiting lists or contracts i think all the contracts could be cancelled or waiting lists could be changed i would just sit on on the cash and see how it's gonna unfold there will be definitely some bargains but i don't think there will be any bargains in the next six to 12 months thank you for the questions glenn matthew uh, christopher is asking would you suggest to put all automatic etf buying plans on hold is it not going against the purpose of dollar cost average strategy yes i am not following this strategy at the moment because i have uh, it's just my hobby. I like reading the reports uh, when other people um, watch movies, play games, which I don't have anything against them of. I just uh, read news and listen to the podcasts and all the information, all the data that I absorb is pointing to the Great Depression. Uh, I, I don't know why I'm laughing because I'm, I could be one of the casualties. Um, I, I've got a small company and some of our clients, unfortunately, delaying their services. But at the same time, we're doing okay for now. And the reason I, I could kind of feel excitement because probably it's a once in a lifetime event. Uh, you and I could learn heaps from what's happening in the world right now. And obviously there could be very awesome buying opportunities in the next 12 months so i'm just um, taking it very slowly and that's why i don't use dollar cost averaging strategy i don't invest any money at the moment yeah if you look at nzx 50 index it dropped only by 17 percent which is nothing compared to s p 500 it dropped by i believe at one point by 30 percent and if you look at the I'm going to just going to show you S&P 500 
history bull and bear. You could see easily that in the past it took the previous uh, crisis took that many months or was it the recovery? I'm pretty sure it, the bear market lasted two years in 2018. Yeah, that must be the recovery. Let me see another table. Plenty of charts. I don't have them at the moment. Let's look at this one. You could see the history for the last hundred years and it would show you that each crash lasted about two years and it was done by 50%, 60%, 50%, 80% and at the moment we are only down by 30%. So there is a lot of room for sell-off and we are not at the bottom if we are only 15%, 70% down. So uh, there is, I think, another 20% of drop for the New Zealand stock exchange as soon as we start to see negative reports from the companies. What are your views on Gentrack? Who supply to airlines and utilities? I haven't researched Gentrack and although I like software companies because they don't have big expenses, it could be a lean software, it could be a lean business to operate. So it's, it is on my watch list and I would definitely consider that company in 12 months time. But as you said, NT, uh, sorry, Andy, it relies on tourism companies such as airlines and utilities and they are in big trouble. They're not going to be profitable. They, that means they're going to cut their service providers. They probably be, be cutting their subscription to companies like Gentrack and Gentrack will suffer from that. My So another question, my thoughts on Sika from, okay, my thoughts on Sika, I know nothing about Sika. Any podcast channel that you can recommend? Uh, asking Ken, thank you for the questions. I like one of the local podcasts that I list, listen to every week it is done by Jeremy. It's stock market movers. Another tip that I recommend to every investor is to join your local branch of New Zealand Shareholders Association. I've been a member for at least two years and you get access to a wealth of knowledge of other experienced investors. They send you uh, regular newsletters and they invite you to some company events and they've got a video channel as well, I believe, where you can learn. So this is where I would start. Obviously, follow my channel and I will be doing a lot of that kind of weekly questions and answers about different subjects. Then Stock Market Movers is a good advice for the podcast. Jesse is asking, why are we seeing such good growth after what people are calling the bottom, which was hit two weeks ago? There could be multiple reasons. The honest question, uh, the honest answer is I don't know because there is no reason for the growth other than the bug, bug and hunters are just trying to pick up a stock uh, which they believe is below the intrinsic value. So th this is my opinion. And well, another obvious reason is that we saw a flood of money coming from pretty much every part of the world and that made confidence a lot of investors so they believe we are out of the woods which I disagree with this could be the two reasons why a lot of investors coming back and start buying stocks this is another useful website that I use that shows you the current rate of the infections and let's be clear this is not the most dangerous virus out there, a lot more people die in car crashes. People are scared of getting sick and there is no treatment yet. Well, there is no proved treatment. People still recover, but it's a fear. And I think we have to follow this chart. And as soon as you see the curve is going the other way, this is going to be one of the signs that we have hit the bottom. That's my personal opinion. So this is the global. This are the global numbers. And this is the daily rate. So it's kind of trying to flatten out, but it's the trend is still up, as you see. And we can select any other country of your interest. For example, you can pick New Zealand. It's still going up. Although our, I believe our government has done a, a decent job 
compared to other countries and we are stabilizing our war against this virus. So we are doing a lot better than many other countries. Death rate is less than 1%, which is damn good. If you're interested in any of these websites, please type in the comments below and I will send any information I can find for you. And I'm sure you're going to find it useful. I'm just going to check my notes. There were some other questions about the airlines. Uh, there was a recent interview by aviation experts and they said at the moment we have roughly about 400 airlines in the world and in the next 12 months we are likely to end up with 50 because a lot of them will go bankrupt unfortunately and with that we're gonna see i believe higher prices less services and less tourists coming in in new zealand therefore all tourism related stocks will get less profit. Jesse is asking my thoughts on KPNG, which is, I believe, KV Property Group. It's a commercial real estate company. Jesse says, look to be hitting little companies with big stick. How do you think they will bounce back after this? Will brick and mortar shops be a thing of the past? Uh, Jesse, it's gonna be tough for all retailers out there because uh, not only they still have to pay rent, with no customers, with no revenue, and they will see less food traffic even after the lockdown. But if they're smart retailers, they're gonna invest in online retail. Therefore, they have to adopt their sales strategy. The good side of everything that we are seeing right now is that there will be a lot of investments in the online. And I like convenience. I hope there will be a lot more online offers. I hope we're gonna see free delivery of everything. I don't th I don't know how is warehousing still coping with, I think they charge $5 or $10 per purchase for online shopping, which is I think ridiculous. It should be free. All retailers should offer free delivery. I think that's gonna be all this coronavirus thing is going to be one of the reasons we're going to see a lot more online shopping development. Another thing that you should consider, they said, a lot of economists said that there were not one black swan, there were two black swans. And the term black swan means that something happened to the economy, to the world, that nobody could foresee. The first black swan was the coronavirus. That hit us very hard, as you can see. The second black swan was the oil crisis and i believe we're gonna see the third black swan and the third black swan is gonna be at least locally it's gonna be affecting new zealand and i think at least new zealand stock market and i call it the elections which are gonna happen in september how it's gonna play out in my opinion the government in the moment is borrowing truckload of money the debt to our debt at the moment is about 20 percent 90% it was uh, last month. So far, economists say we're gonna reach 40%. I believe in the next three years, during the next election period, or not during the uh, election period, during, during the next government period, whether it's gonna be national or labor government, whoever it is, for the next four years, I think we're gonna reach at least 60 to 80% debt. What that means is that the government will have to find other sources of revenue. They, uh, I, I don't think they are likely to increase the taxes. I don't think they, because they, if we're going to see 10% or 15% unemployment, therefore they're going to lose the election if they're going to say, hey, in September 2020, in 2020, September, vote for us if we're going to increase your personal income tax. That's not going to happen. The same is going to happen with company tax. I don't think they're going to touch it because there is no, there is hardly anyone to tax. A lot of companies will go bankrupt or close down. Therefore, they have to find other instruments to generate revenue. I believe the third black swan is going to be some kind of wealth tax for people with Kiwi Saver. What? Well, not Kiwi Saver, but with shares. And they're going to tax, I believe, some kind of a transaction fee. And the reason. I believe it's gonna happen because it's been mentioned in the past. I think it's just um, gonna be very politically absorbable for palatable for other people, uh, for middle class, because there are mainly, there at least the perception that only 
wealthy people or people with high income trade on the stock market. So they're gonna clip the ticket from these transactions. They possibly will introduce capital gain tax and it's gonna be a broad capital gain gain tax on property, on shares and everything. They're gonna even possibly tax first time home buyers and even if you're gonna sell your first property or your only family home because we have to find some kind of revenue even though i've got properties myself i think we have to sacrifice a bit of income in the future to stabilize the economy i think is this is the right thing to do and this is one of the times when we all in it together the whole economy is struggling and we have to find some kind of ways to generate billions and billions of dollars so i think if they start taxing capital gain on shares there will be a bit of a sell-off not huge not like in recession times but i think some of the shares gonna drop sorry if i pronounce your name incorrectly aeon any software companies share names for online shopping port of development in new zealand i'm not quite sure what you're asking software companies share on share name if you could explain what are you looking for a online platform to trade shares buy shares sell shares uh, paul is asking the, or he's saying it's a statement they will have to legalize weed to get the tech, uh, the benefit of the large tax yes paul that's another option which they were planning to do anyway Mandeep is saying, with the government worldwide pumping in money into the economy, shouldn't this offset the setback? In the previous recessions, uh, were there government aids such as this, 12 billion? Now, this is unprecedented. Maybe there were, but 12 billion is just a start. I think it's going to be at least 30 billion because we just started and uh, we're gonna see very high unemployment numbers and they will need a lot more money to keep all us employed to to keep the economy in function this is why i think they need to introduce some kind of new taxes very high taxes i think we are just gonna wrap up unless you've got any other questions thank you for your time i enjoy you being here Make sure you subscribe, follow this page, hit the like button because I'm going to do it on a weekly basis. I'm going to invite in the future possibly some professionals, some other investors, maybe fund managers who can uh, share their own experience. Hi, Jason. And uh, once again, thank you for your questions. Stay tuned because more good stuff coming soon.